Today we're going to be making lentil soup. You'll need some dried lentils which you have rinsed off, three small onions and one red onion or one large or medium onion, a couple of cloves of garlic, a pepper, some carrots and celery. Hello, welcome to Beeville Live. I'm Christina Neely. I'll be your host today and today we're going to make lentil soup. I have over here to chop up two carrots, two stalks of celery, four cloves of garlic, one small sweet pepper, and four small onions. You can also use a large onion. Red onions or white onions are fine. I've already put my lentils in my pot. Now this is about a half a packet of lentils that I have already rinsed off. Okay. So this is a great recipe to use on a cold winter day. It just snowed and I know everybody's going to be hungry tonight for dinner, so I want to make something hearty. This is a meatless dish, um, but you can add hot dogs to it. I may add some hot dogs to it a little bit later, right before serving, because they don't need much cooking time. So to a half a pack of lentils, I'll use a half a pack of hot dogs, about four chopped small, and I'll show you that later. So let's get chopping. So the first thing I want to do is get some water and liquid into my pot. Now, I had my son had a beer the other the other night. He didn't finish it. I didn't let it go to waste. Whenever you're making soup, uh, especially stews, you can always throw beer in the pot. The other thing I'm going to put in the pot for flavoring is I had some leftover um, chicken gravy from when I made chicken the other night, and it had uh, garlic and onions in it. Um, it had uh, some tomatoes and some greens in it, and uh, I didn't use all the gravy, so that's a good base for soup. So never let anything go to waste. Whenever you're cooking, there's always something you can repurpose a dish for. So because I'm doing that, I'm not going to need to add bouillon or anything like that or chicken stock. If you don't have gravy, um, you can just add chicken stock to it. If you want it vegetarian, just add seasoning. Um, or a vegetable broth base. Um, so you're going to need about four to six cups of water. The lentils absor absorb a lot of water, so you want to make sure you have plenty of lentils, um, plenty of water in your pot with your lentils. So I've now filled my pot about three quarters of the way with liquid. Okay, so I'm going to give that a stir. And the thing that's nice about using um, the liquid that I cooked the chicken in is that uh, I had thrown some um, dried tomatoes in there, garlic, onions, and some greens that I had cooked with. So it's gonna give it a really nice flavor. It'll make it a really hearty base. All right, so I'm gonna turn that on to high and bring it to a boil. When it boils, I'm gonna turn it down to simmer. So while that's heating up, I want to prepare my vegetables. So when you're slicing celery, you cut off the ends. If you have greenery on the ends, you can throw that in your pot, it'll flavor it as well. I generally slice, I have a small cutting board, so I generally slice my celery into three slices like this. And then I follow the lines that Mother Nature gave you. So you'll see that there's lines that go down the ribbing. Some people cut the ribbing out. Since we're making it for soup and we're cutting it small, I cut it into about four sections like that. So you're going to do that. I used I cut it into three, the stalk into three, because it makes it easier to manage. And like I said, I have a small cutting board. Um, you don't have to, but it's just kind of the way I cut up my vegetables. Um, I've been doing it this way for years, and it um, works really, really well. So you may notice that I have my bandage off my thumb. I actually have just have a small bandage on there. So I. Um, I had my stitches removed yesterday, so I'm excited about that because I can start my baking this week. And I'll be doing some more videos on holiday baking um, today and tomorrow that I will be posting. So don't forget to like, sh share, comment, and subscribe. Um, I always like hearing from my viewers. And if you have any ideas or you've tried something or you have a question, I'll be glad to answer it. Just go ahead and post it. So once you've sliced those three pieces into um, four more sections, you just stack them up and then you go right down uh, the line and chop them up. And before you know it, you have a nice arrangement of 
chopped celery, like that. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, the thing about soup is, um, you know, you're gonna have different sized vegetables from different chopping techniques, and that's fine. It's also a good way to get rid of leftovers. Um, like I said, I had the leftover gravy in the fridge, um, but I didn't want to go to waste. So next I'm gonna add my carrots. So my carrots, same thing, I sliced down to about a section that's about three or four inches. You can use your hand as measurement, about finger size. And then I cut it in half and cut it in half again. So now you have four quarters, okay? And then you're gonna slice that down. So these are my fresh carrots that I got from Brady Form. I'm going to have another, um, they delivered to St. Mary's in Baldwinsville, so you don't have to go all the way down to Syracuse. And Brady Form, I always talk about my videos, they make, um, it's a sustainable form and they teach form education to um, folks in the urban city. Um, it's a great place to learn and grow. It's a sustainable farm and everything is organic and they make a delivery out to Baldwinsville, which is wonderful. So, um, seven loads or about 130 bucks and it's packed full of fresh vegetables, greens, onions, um, all kinds of seasonal foods. And then I go ahead and I make my um, recipes out of whatever I have. So every time we get a delivery, I'll be posting more more recipes okay and since we eat a lot of vegetarian meals um, it's perfect for us some of my meals I do add a little bit of meat to not much but um, they're all adaptable to um, being prepared meatless so it's not a problem if you see something I make just leave the meat out and it tastes just as good it just depends on what I have in my fridge which is really the best way um, to cook that way you're not making you know, multiple trips to the grocery store. I always look at what I have. I always keep my pantry stocked with um, dried beans and lentils, um, you know, and some canned vegetables in case I run out. Um, and then I make my meals out of that. And you know, most people rotate around 14 to 30 meals in a month. Um, and these are all really good and healthy. I like to use a lot of legumes or beans during the week. So there we have our carrots. So that's two whole carrots, two stalks of celery. I had one small pepper left over. And like I said, I'm trying to use up what I have in the fridge as I know I'm getting a load this week and I don't want anything to go to waste. So again, you just follow the cuts that Mother Nature, the lines that Mother Nature gives us and chop everything up and throw that little small pepper in the pot. Um, that's an orange pepper. I like to use different colored peppers. Now, if you don't have small onions like this, these are wonderful onions I got from Grady Form. They're really sweet. You can use a yellow onion or a red onion. Um, depending on how much you like onions, you can either um, use a medium or a large onion. And again, you're going to follow the lines of the onion and then slice across. And just chop it up like that and just keep adding all your vegetables until you're finished chopping um, so lentil soup does take a little bit of time to make so if you're working it's not something that you're going to make that night well you can it depends on what time you want to eat um, it cooks faster than beans so um, cooking on the weekend is good um, it's two o'clock in the afternoon this will be done in time for a five o'clock dinner so it does take a couple hours for the lentils to cook down, um, depending on how creamy you want your soup, the longer you cook it, the more it'll cook down. So uh, I'm going to serve it with some fresh garlic bread, and that's super easy to make. I just take Italian bread, and I um, put a little bit of olive oil on it, and I take some fresh garlic and put that on it, and I put it right in the oven, um, 350 oven for about... 10 minutes and uh, you can use butter if you don't want to use olive oil, but I like the olive oil healthier. And um, I serve that with my soup and that makes for a nice hearty meal. And I'll show you what that's going to look like later on today when I'm finished with it. So when I say follow the lines that Mother Nature has, if you cut an onion in half, you'll see how these lines go up and down. You want to take those onion, those lines, and you're going to slice this way, okay? And then across. It cuts a lot of um, cut time out when you're 
preparing uh, vegetables for the pot and it makes it easier to cut up. All right, so that's my onion. Three small onions or one medium or large onion. Okay, garlic. Easiest way to do this is to put it down on the flat, take the flat side, put it on your, your board, take the heel of your hand and crush it down like that. The reason you want to crush your garlic is it releases those essential oils that are so important and healthy in garlic. Now, if you don't like garlic, you can just leave it out, but garlic is really good for you. It thins your blood, it's good for your heart. Um, and I like garlic, so I always put plenty of garlic in. And then once that's crushed, you're just gonna go back and forth, chop it up, and put it in the fire. And that is it for the vegetables. Okay, so seasonings. I don't need to add a lot because I used my gravy base, but I am gonna add a little bit of salt, not much, to that. A little bit of pepper. Now, if you're on a salt-free diet and you don't wanna use salt, um, what I used to do for my husband, since he was on a salt-free diet, was I used Mrs. Dash's. And it's wonderful, you know, sometimes I just use some of that in there and cut back on my salt, and that makes for a nice alternative. Okay, one of the things I always add to everything that I'm cooking, because it's really good for you, is um, turmeric, which is, and it gives the soup a nice color, which is a bright yellow color. And you're adding about a quarter to a half teaspoon of turmeric. I add ground cumin, and again, those two things, about a quarter to a half teaspoon and paprika. Now, if you want to make the whole pot, same thing, about a quarter teaspoon of paprika. If you want to use um, the whole bag of lentils, that's fine. Since I'm just cooking for two of us, I'll get several nights meals out of this. Whatever I don't use, um, you can freeze. Um, this soup freezes really, really well. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'll show you what the soup looks like in here and then we're going to turn it down once it comes to a boil and let it simmer and that's pretty much it and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's cooked. Um, I'm going to put a lid on it and um, after I show you what it looks like and uh, then we'll come back and take a look at it. So that's what it looks like once you put your vegetables in there so I'm just waiting for it to come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil I'm going to put my lid on top and then I'm going to turn it down to simmer. Is now. I'm going to turn my heat down to low, vegetarian style as I often do. You can also add ham to it. After you add your hot dogs, you just really need to heat it up and that is done. Now you can cook it down a little bit further if you want, but I've been cooking it for about an hour and 40 minutes and it is done. So serve that with some delicious garlic bread or crackers and enjoy. Bon appetit!